Jesus is Jesus lifted high And many there flies across this land That only might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven I want to see Jesus lifted high A man that flies across this land The only might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven I want to see, I want to see I want to see Jesus lifted high I want to see, I want to see I want to see Jesus lifted high Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across this land, that only might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. I want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across this land, that only might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. I want to see, I want to see. I want to see Jesus lifted high. I want to see, I want to see, I want to see Jesus lifted high. Step by step we're moving forward, little by little we're taking ground. Every prayer a powerful weapon, strongholds come tumbling down and down and down and down. I want to see Jesus lifted high. That flies across this land, but only might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. I want to see Jesus lifted high. A banner that flies across this land, but only might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. I want to see, I want to see, I want to see Jesus lifted high. I want to see. I want to see, I want to see Jesus lifted high. Step by step we're moving forward, little by little we're taking ground. Every prayer a powerful weapon, strongholds come tumbling down and down and down and down. I want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across this land. That only might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven I want to see Jesus lifted high A banner that flies across this land That only might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven I want to see, I want to see I want to see Jesus lifted high I want to see, I want to see I want to see Jesus lifted high. I want to see, I want to see, I want to see Jesus lifted high. I want to see, I want to see, I want to see Jesus lifted high. Well, good morning, everyone. I hope today finds you well and in good spirits. Before we get started this morning, I wanted to give you just a couple of quick announcements. Um, this Wednesday, the 23rd, will be the first of our forums that Nancy and I are hosting that we're calling Stand Up, Speak Up. It'll be held here at the church at 6.30 p.m. 
Um, this is a, a series of forums that we're going to do once a week, um, really talking about the topics of the day. There's just a lot going on out in the world that are, that are creating uh, a sense of fear and just an urgency about um, so many topics that I feel it's incumbent upon us to, to confront these things and to really put them on the table so we know what to pray for, how to pray, and how to carry ourselves through this difficult season. Um, I intend to, to do these once a week, um, like I said, beginning this Wednesday, at least through the election season. And so we'll see what, what uh, transpires after that, and we'll see how it goes. So everyone is welcome. Um, just show up at 6.30 on Wednesday. The, the following um, forums will be held on Tuesdays after this one on Wednesday. So Wednesday the 23rd, and then from thereafter, it's on Tuesdays. Second thing I wanted to uh, remind you of is next Sunday, a week from today, we will have a baptism service right out front um, on our porch immediately following next Sunday's service. So if you're um, inclined, stop on out and witness this and help us celebrate this wonderful event. My sister is coming in from Pennsylvania just um, for this specific reason. She would asked me to baptize her and I'm honored to do so. So I hope you'll join us in celebrating that. And um, I guess by now you've figured out that uh, if you're in with us this morning in, um, in, in person, you realize that I'm not here this morning. And you can tell by this video that I'm doing it from my office, so I'm not standing in front of the church where I normally am Sunday, if you would, as you would see me from home. The reason being is we're in, a, um, we're in Maryland today, uh, actually yesterday, um, for... Pastor Tim's son's wedding. We were invited to that and we felt honored to drive and attend that. So for today, I have a special treat for you. Um, you may remember um, about a year ago, um, a young lady that uh, stepped up and, and spoke in our church. She works with Rahab. She's, a, she's the uh, church relations director. Um, Stephanie Johnson. Um, I count her as Nancy and I count her as a very dear friend. We've come to know and love her, pray for her often. And her and I were having a conversation ab about a week ago and the Holy Spirit just, just hit me immediately. He said, ask her to speak in your absence. And so I broached the subject with her and she prayed about it and um, she agreed because I feel I feel like she has a message for our church, something that's very pertinent, and I think you will be blessed and edified by um, the message that she brings for you today. I can't wait to um, watch it with you because I will be joining the service from, from West Virginia. So it's good to be with you in spirit this morning. I ask you to um, give uh, Stephanie a warm welcome, and, and let me just pray for you to open the service. Lord, we thank you for this morning. Lord, I thank you that... Even in my absence, we're able to come together and to um, fellowship and worship and praise you and pray together. And Lord, I just I just love that our church family offers this this flexibility and that in this season of difficulty, we can still be together, whether in person or um, electronically, as it were. So, Lord, I just ask you to bless Stephanie and her message to our church. I know that it is, it is your will that she be there. You, you put this on my heart to ask her, and I'm, I'm excited for what you have given her to share for our church. So, Lord, I just pray that you would anoint her for this purpose, um, lovingly bathe her words with your spirit. Lord, we, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. Church family, welcome Stephanie Johnson. Thank you. Am I good? Yeah. Ah, good morning. It's kind of intimidating knowing the pastor's watching online. Hey, Jim, thanks for the introduction. <laughs> um, whether this is a special treat, you guys can be the judge. <laughs> but I've decided I will stop calling Pastor Jim because every time I talk to him, he asks me to speak. <laughs> and so I'm here a lot, but I've come to love pastor jim and nancy like he said um i see them as like an extension of my family my parents aren't local so um i really love getting to spend time with them i love spending time here i love worshiping with this church um, and so this morning i'm actually not speaking about rahab and that's how you guys know me but i'm going to be talking about a personal topic 
and I feel comfortable sharing it in this space because I do feel like this is like a home away from home for me, this, this church. So I'm humbled. Um, I feel like Jim hyped me up a lot more than I would say, but um, I just want to talk about what the Lord's been teaching me in this season. And um, it's not to say I'm going through the hardest thing that anyone in this room is going through. And it's not to say that we won't face, I won't face harder things down the road in life, but um, this is where the Lord has me and what he's teaching me. And so I hope and pray that it's something that might benefit you in some way, shape, or form. Um, and so I'm just going to pray for us. Can never have too much prayer. I know Jim already prayed, but I would love to pray for us. So, Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for waking us up again. Thank you for the sunshine and the crisp fall air. I thank you that you are a God who isn't afraid of all our emotion, and you're not afraid of um, walking through hard things with us, Lord. In fact, you say that you will walk through things with us, and I ask, Lord, that you would be walking through whatever um, anyone sitting here, anyone listening online, whatever they're going through, Lord, I pray that you would show them that you are near and that you are kind, Lord, and that because we are followers of you, God, that our suffering can look different than what the rest of the world sees, God, and that we can have an eternal perspective on suffering because we have our hope anchored in what Jesus Christ did for us, Lord. So I pray that you'd speak through me now as you and I have had this dialogue over many, many months, Lord, and now we're opening it up to let other people kind of in on what you've been teaching me, Lord. I pray that it would bless them, challenge them, whatever you have for them, Lord. I pray that you would just speak to individual hearts this morning. We love you. It's in your son's name. Amen. All right. So to give you a little context, um, my little yellow ribbon. Does anyone know what a yellow ribbon means? It means that I have a soldier who is overseas. My husband is part of the Army, part of the Ohio National Guard, and he flies helicopters. He's way cooler than I am. <laughs> um, but I've known, we've, we've known for a few years now that he was scheduled to deploy around this time frame, knowing all things military, the time frame and the location has changed multiple times. Um, but he's been gone for almost three months now, and so at the end of last year, as I was dreading coming into 2020, um, the Lord kept turning me back to the passage John 15. Um, and since my husband has been gone, he's actually been taking us both to this pas passage pretty frequently. Um, and so I tell everyone that I knew 2020 was going to be a rough year, and then it just took you guys a minute to catch up and be on the same page as me. But John 15, the, um, it talks about abiding. It talks about this visual of a vine and branches and fruit and pruning and all good things um, pertaining to life and what that looks like. And so John 15 says, I abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So the word abide has been washing over me, and the Lord just impressed upon me the fact that abiding is a constant. It's not, it's not a stop and go. And we have the privilege of having a God who is a relational God. He didn't just create us and then let us be free and set us on our own. He wants a relationship with us. He sent his only son to die for us so that he could be in relationship with us. And I'm so, so thankful for that because he didn't just give us a bucket of strength and a bucket of grace at the beginning of each year and say, all right, go ration accordingly, good luck. Um, but instead, he takes us day by day. And I'm so grateful for that because you and I would have been out of those buckets of strength and grace by March of this year. It's been a tough year. I'm thankful that he wants to be with us each and every day. He tells us not to worry about tomorrow. He says his mercies are new every morning. There's so much in the word about God being with us continually. And so this, this passage also talks about pruning. 
And I knew this was going to be a season of pruning for me. Um, I knew God was going to be pulling things out that may be healthy, like my relationship with my husband, but he was going to be pruning me of maybe some unhealthy reliance on him. And I know the Lord can use your spouse or whatever to provide or to protect you. Um, But I think God was just kind of boiling me back down to the fact that I need to cling to the source first and foremost, instead of um, my husband's presence, because he kind of removed that false sense of security. And my husband's amazing. And the Lord like has given to me, given him to me as a gift. But I knew it was going to be a season of pruning and okay, how much do I actually believe God is who he says he is and that he is enough for me. So at the beginning of the shelter in place order, the Lord was reminding me of Psalm 23, 1, which I think most of us know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And I kept thanking the Lord that he was supplying every single one of our needs and that we really weren't lacking anything. We were blessed because there were a lot of people that went without in this year. And so then I later started wrestling with the question, Is God enough? Not God plus something. For me, that was God plus the safe return of my husband. And so I'm grateful that we can hold on to the Lord and that despite life being hard, he is good. The fact that we can have everything imaginable but be without God means that we still have nothing. But the flip side of that is that we can have him and nothing else and we still have everything. And so God will walk us through opportunities to test our open-handedness to see if he is really enough. And so while pruning is uncomfortable and we wouldn't choose it, it is good. A lot of times we want um, we want the fruit, right? Without, without the labor that we have to put in to produce it. So quite practically, I've been planting some grass. This is practical application for growing. Um, My husband loves yard work and he takes pride in his lawn looking real good. And so I had one job while he was gone to to keep the grass alive. And wouldn't you know, two weeks in, I killed it. (laughs) No one thinks about keeping grass alive, but I literally killed it. Um, I used this spray that was supposed to enhance it, and because of how hot the summer was, it just baked on there. So I came out a couple days later, and we had very large patches of dead brown grass. So I told my husband, and he's so gracious, he's like, it's not your fault, blah, blah, blah. But I told him I wanted to make it right, and that I'd put in the work to fix it. Now, I don't like yard work at all, but I spent hours last weekend. Um, I mowed it. I had to mow it again because I had to figure out how to put the bag on the mower because apparently you can't have grass clippings sitting on top when you're supposed to plant new grass. I spent time um, weaseling it. I don't know if you guys know what a weasel is. I call it the spiky roller, but it gets up all the old grass and I raked it out. I laid the seed. I spread the fertilizer and I've been sprinkling the peat moss and faithfully watering it. So it's been a lot, right? And yesterday I got to connect with him on the phone, which was a treat. And I said, how long is it going to take before I start seeing little baby sprouts of grass? And he was, um, he told me, um, not yet. <laughs> it hasn't been that much time. And so I just kind of chuckled to myself because, again, it just showed I wanted the product without the process. And in the midst of me raking and watering and whatnot, I... I'm not going to lie, I grumble inside. I'm like, this stinks. I don't want to be doing this. But after the fact, I, um, I, w- I felt this sense of satisfaction because I put that work into it. I put the sweat into it. And I know, and I'm praying for my grass. So if you guys think of it, pray my grass grows. Um, but I, I feel like it's satisfying knowing you went through that work. It's more satisfying. So while God could just give us the fruit, he wants us to walk through that process. And so <clears throat> in the same way, we want, we want the fruit and a life looking like Christ without putting the work and being faithful to produce the qualities of looking like Christ. So because God knows what's best for us, he puts us in these things called pop quizzes, suffering, 
We normally don't welcome suffering. Um, I saw this quote the other day, Western Christians usually pray suffering away. Suffering is something to steward, not pray away. Non-Western Christians pray God will use them because of their suffering. That hit me deep. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I definitely pray that my husband will return quicker, that time will move quickly. But I don't want to waste this time. I'm praying that the Lord will allow me to walk in it step by step with him and produce the fruit. And so because suffering is inevitable in life, um, what, it, what would it look like if we stewarded it well? So the army recognizes this fact that we suffer, that there's pain, pain is inevitable. The army has this nice little phrase, embrace the suck. <laughs> Lovely, right? (laughs) Um, And the idea is that, um, the idea is the same, that we can lean in to God and we can lean into the trials because they're inevitable. Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8 says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its fruits by the stream and does not fear when heat comes. For its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. A couple things stick out to me in this passage. The one who trusts the Lord is planted. He's abiding. He's in communion with God. He does not fear when the heat comes, not if the heat comes. His leaves remain green, a visible sign to others perhaps testimony of us enduring with our faith well. Um, The year of drought, again, that's when it comes, not if it comes. I think a lot of us could say 2020 would fall into a year of drought. Um, But our circumstances do not dictate if we bear fruit because it's where we're planted. So... That's the only way we can make it through is if we are that tree who trusts in the Lord, if we are planted next to that stream. Isaiah 43, 1 through 3 also says, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, you shall not, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. So again, more scripture to tell us that suffering will come. So the difference is that we, as believers, recognize that we don't have to walk through it alone. Um, Deuteronomy 34, 25. Now, I recognize this verse is probably totally taken out of context, but there was I was reading it the other day, and this little section of the verse popped out to me that said, as your days, so shall your strength be. And obviously, that was written in its pr- correct context a long time ago, but I think that the Lord allowed that to jump off the page at me because it's like, you know what? I'm going to provide the strength for you each and every day. I don't have that bucket, right? He's going to provide that strength for me. And in Psalm 34, he says, I am close to the brokenhearted. I save those who are crushed in spirit. So does anyone feel broken this morning or maybe crushed in spirit at all? Has this year been crushing for you? I find it comforting to know that, yes, we have to walk through these hard things, but we aren't alone. And I'm thankful because God knows what he's doing God's will is good, it's pleasing, and it's perfect, but that doesn't mean it's not hard. I mean, Jesus himself asked for God to take the cup from him, but then he yielded himself to the Lord and said, but not my will, your will be done. He even sweat blood, and I'm not to the spot yet where I'm sweating blood out of missing my husband or walking through things and feeling alone, Um, but I have felt physically sick, I have cried my eyes out so hard, I feel like I'm going to throw up. Um, And I actually came across a verse that explained (laughs) exactly what I was feeling. Um, It said, Lord, oh, look, oh, Lord, for I am in distress. My stomach churns. My heart is wrung within me. And just because, and I'm preaching to myself here, I haven't accepted these truths myself yet, but just because we cry just because it's hard 
just because we can feel physically sick, it doesn't mean that we're not leaning into what God has for us. In fact, God wants us to be in the position where we recognize we can't do this on our own. We need to cling to him. And I'm preaching to myself because I cried my eyes out the other night and I said, Lord, how am I supposed to talk to people about embracing the suffering when I hear and bawling my eyes out? Um, But God says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. We're actually the strongest we are when we recognize just how weak we are because we know that God's power will shine through. In fact, that stand up, speak up thing, I was thinking about it in context to what I'm, I'm talking about this morning. And I was thinking of stand up, speak up, yes, has to do with us being, um, with the way of the Lord being attacked, even subtly in society. But also stand up, speak up in that stand up, stand up through your suffering, stand up for what God's teaching you and speak out. We're supposed to use our words as a testimony to the Lord. And so I'm the first one to admit that I'm the weak one. um, And I'm still accepting this concept, but God is powerful and God is near and he sees us. I don't know if anyone has seen the the show, The Chosen. Anyone? Yeah. Um, I was going to show a clip and it's my fault because I'm technologically challenged. And so I'm just going to explain this to you. But basically, um, The Chosen is scripturally based, but has the creative license where it fills in some personality from scripture. And I want to point out that the point of it is to drive you back to scripture, right? It's not just to entertain you, but it's to like pour into you and say, wow, like you fall more in love with Jesus watching this show. And it's based in scripture because normally those things that you're pretty hesitant about because you wonder how, how in line with God's word it is, but that's a good show. And so there's this clip where Jesus is in the, the home of Simon, Simon Peter, and he's dialoguing with his wife. And he basically says, I've asked him, I've asked Simon to make some sacrifices. And because you're one flesh with him, I know that these are affecting you. You're sacrificing as well. And he basically just looks into her eyes and says, I see you and I'm going to take care of you. You have a part to play in this. And I felt the Lord's nearness. I actually watched that episode with my husband before he left. And I felt like God was speaking right to me. And again, that interaction may or may not have happened. It may have looked different. But I felt like um, the sentiment was based in scripture. That Jesus is gentle and that he is near. I feel like the harder the moments we walk through, the nearer we get to see how God is to us. His nearness has looked like this for me. It's looked like texts from people I don't regularly talk to to say that they're praying for me, and it happens to be right after I have an emotional breakdown. His nearness looks like waking me up at a random time in the middle of the night so that I can connect with my husband, who is many hours ahead of us. It looks like dinner invitations and flower deliveries and neighbors who say that they've adopted me. So when we as believers walk through hard things, we should be more expectant that God is going to show up because he will and he does. He shows up when I'm lying face on the ground crying out for his help just to get me through the next moments ahead of me. Seek to call out the ways that the Lord is near to you and showing up during each and every day and it'll help fuel your faith and you'll lean in even further. And he often shows up using the body of Christ to encourage you, to comfort you, and to support you. I don't think I could have gotten this far in the deployment without the body of believers around me. I was driving home from Georgia, and the Lord gave me this really cool image. I'm not saying it's a vision. It was just this image that popped into my head, and it was me carrying a really heavy load walking up a mountain. But behind me were all these people like lifting up on my heavy load. So it was still, the load was still attached to me, but actually they were carrying the weight of it. 
and we are still walking up the mountain. And so it's, I still have to walk through this, but the Lord has supplied other people around me to kind of, to bear my burden, if you will, and to shoulder it with me. So why do our lives look different because of Christ? Let me give you a phrase to remind you. The juice is worth the squeeze. Kind of a weird one, I know. <laughs> so I'll give you context. My husband and I have um, been crushing on each other since we were middle school. And so all throughout high school and all throughout college, we felt like we were dating forever. And I mean, we kind of were, I wouldn't suggest it, but um, we wanted to obviously make that next step and, and be married. Well, back in our senior year of high school, I moved to North Carolina and thus began our five and a half years of long distance dating. So anytime I felt like I can't make it to the next time I'm gonna see him, I'm gonna burst, you know, that young love thing. <laughs> um, he would say, the juice is worth the squeeze. And all that meant was the discomfort that we're going through will be worth it when we're together, right? It, it'll be a sweet reunion. And so he kept reminding me that throughout our dating relationship and on our wedding day, which felt like, you know, the, the ultimate reward for, for the long distance, on our wedding day, he sent me my pretty new Bible with my name engraved into it, my new name, and he sent me the most tender note, and it ended with, the juice was worth the squeeze. I know, it gives you all the feels, right? All the guys are like, wow, this is sappy. <laughs> um, but now we're back into doing long distance because army and so we keep reminding ourselves again that the juice is worth the squeeze and I got to thinking about that on an earthly scale and then on an eternal scale so in the same way that our trials squeeze us we have gain in the end that will reach points because God is so kind he'll reach will reach points where we get just a little taste of that sweetness in the same way that when we were dating we got to see each other and then we go back into the squeeze um, so God allows us to see the fruit that we bear along the road of suffering as we abide in him. Romans 5, 3 through 5 talks about some of this fruit. It says, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us really good fruit that we want without going through the process. But I got to thinking, and I've heard a couple different pastors actually speak on this lately on Acts 28, and sometimes the fruit that we bear is not just for ourselves, that our pain is actually a platform for people who are watching. So like I said, I've heard some pastors speak recently on Acts 28, and so Paul did not pick to be shipwrecked. He did not want to be shipwrecked and on an island that he didn't know um, on the island of Malta. But God knew he needed to be there, right? And he placed him there. And people watched him. So he's like helping make the fire and the snake bites him. And people are watching. He shakes off the snake, right? But then people are watching and literally waiting for him to just fall over and die. And in that same way, we might have people who are watching us and waiting for our suffering to defeat us. And when it, but when it doesn't, when they see that we keep moving forward, that's a powerful testimony. His suffering was also placed on Malta so that he could go heal a man. I think it was like three days later he went and healed someone. And so God used Paul's pain to probably produce some amazing things in his own life, but he also used it to bless other people. And so not just for yourself and for eternity, but know that you should go win that battle of faith because you might be spurring on people who are watching and people who are struggling to make it through. Go win that battle and win it for people who are watching skeptically too. Your faith can be a testimony to encourage others. The juice is worth the squeeze, right? The juice of helping others. Then eternally, um, our marriage, again, brought like the ultimate reward of long distance. And so we too will have an end to our suffering because we're the bride of Christ, right? So quite literally, we're going to have a marriage at the end as well. 
and so we will be welcomed into eternity with him. Romans 8.18 says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. It's going to be so sweet. My suffering has a limit. I know my husband's going to come home. I can't imagine walking through this with fear, but the Lord has granted me so much peace, and that's another message for another time. I could totally dive into that. Um, But whether your suffering has a limit or not, remember that this side of heaven, it might, it might not. Remember that all suffering does have a time limit when we are welcomed into eternity with God, and it is so worth it. The juice is worth the squeeze. Hang in there. So lean in. Embrace the suck, as the army would say. Why? Because life is hard. But you and I, because we have the hope in Jesus Christ, we can view things differently. God is with us, and he has purpose in our suffering. It's not wasted. And because of that, we can rejoice in the Lord, no matter our circumstances. Let's pray. God, I thank you that Jesus is the game changer. I thank you that because of him, all the hard things we go through are not done in vain, Lord. I thank you that you are near and that you are kind. I ask, Lord, for anyone here today that is walking through something hard and questioning if you're near or kind, I pray that you'd show them, Lord. Show them in a unique way that it wouldn't just be coincidence, but that it would be you speaking to their heart and knowing that it is you, Lord. I ask that when we do walk through suffering, that we are prayerful and mindful that it's not just for us, Lord, but that it's a platform to to be um, witnesses, Lord, on your behalf to other people. So I ask, Lord, that our suffering would not just benefit us, Lord, but would also benefit and spur on those around us. I pray that lives will be changed because we are walking through suffering, Lord. I pray that we wouldn't ask for our suffering just to go away, Lord, but that we'd lean in and ask what you have for us, Lord. We know you're refining us. We're thankful that you care about us enough to refine us, Lord, but we also know that it's hard, and so we ask you to be with us. I thank you for this opportunity to speak, Lord. I ask that anything that was said that was not of you, Lord, would just go in one ear and out the other, Lord. But I pray that if someone needed to hear one particular line or verse or whatever, Lord, that it would be you speaking to their heart today. We love you. We praise you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Have a great week.